Community Motors West Side, the GM Superstore next to Cinema West. Community Motors of Mason City, we give you more. Do you want your children or your grandchildren outside playing by a school that has this stuff coming in the air? If it is coming in the air, if it isn't. We don't even know that. We haven't even got a straight answer for that. But all I'm asking for as a grandmother is please, I'm begging you, think about, think about what it's going to do to our children if this doesn't go the way it's supposed to. Thank you. Three were 317, 20th Street Southeast. I got a councilman at 7 o'clock, but I'm okay with missing that. I'll tell you what else I'm okay with too. You tell me another, uh, and I'm not here as a council member or a landfill board member, which I've been on for 12 years. You tell me that you've ever heard of another elected official anywhere in this country that's got an election in three weeks, had an election in three weeks, two weeks ago, and stood up and said, I was, didn't think this company was a good fit when we've got unemployment and we need jobs in this community. That's passion for you. It doesn't matter if I get elected or not. What matters is, is what we do here, the right thing here. Most of these people here want to compromise with you or just move it into another uh, area. I support that. Me, I, want to, I don't want nothing to do with the plant. I've had my hours of uh, research have told me uh, these guys have been knocking around since 2006, and they've met with some of the biggest energy companies in the world, Excel, Dakota, uh, Arkansas, all over Colorado, other states, other presentations. They haven't been able to land anywhere. That's a big thing to me. I've done my study about gasification. It's been around for 10,000 years. Oh, by the way, there's a credibility issue here with you. If you can produce a product that does not decompose, dust to dust, ash to ash, this is another thing that concerns me, does not decompose. I, I don't know anything that doesn't not decompose. I don't know anything. Now, <clears throat> with that said, I just want to give this to you. I've also asked for some help, too. This is a letter from the Saragorda County Department of Public Health that you can have. I just want to say this. Uh, they were pleased that I solicited their comments. I want to know because nobody has. Staff hasn't. Nobody else has. That's a typical place where you'd want to go. You know they're working with industry right now in Saragorda County to get a monitoring system. They're working with the North Iowa Corridor and EDC, which supports the monitoring system. I'm aware of Creative Systems' uh, plan to operate in Saragorda County. However, I hesitate to answer the questions in your letter until I receive additional information about the facility and operation. Like you, I have many questions and concerns. Hopefully like you. By the way, I know that you don't have many of the answers because I've been talking to staff for days. If staff doesn't have the answers, you don't have the answers. And you could hear all the research that's been done. In closing, I'd appreciate an opportunity to participate. This is the Department of Health in a discussion and look forward to more information provided by CS at this time. This is a letter I want to give to you from uh, the Department of, uh, for your record. A little bit about the petition that I know. The petition was given to the two, the majority of the signatures on the petition came from the two closest neighborhoods of that plant. That means something. And those people were thanked for what they did. I want to talk to somebody who said there's no pressure anywhere. And I please, don't hold this issue, don't hold me against the issue. I know that's a popular thing to do right now. If Max Weaver's involved, it's got to be bad. There's two groups here tonight, flat out. Those that want to move forward, and, and, and don't see what the others see, and the group that wants to be cautious and plan. Me, I don't want the, I don't want the company. I, I'm not interested in it. And the reason is, many. But I want to say this to you. There's already been some intimidation and some issues that, that have been put out there uh, to staff by elected officials. And let me read this comment to you that's a month and a half old, if you think minds aren't already made up. This is from September 27th. This is from the mayor. I have developed a high level of interest in seeing solutions brought to the table to usher this project through to completion so Mesa City and North Iowa can see a long-term net benefit. He's not even here tonight to hear the citizens of Mesa City and their concerns. He's an elected representative. The other thing I want to say is Ms. Jacqueline Arthur, representing the company, spoke tonight that they've done a lot of investigation and have a lot of answers. Right off the bat, she says that this is the zoning, the proper zoning for a place like this. The truth is, the truth is, waste transfer is not allowed in any zoning district in Mesa City. You correct me if I'm wrong. It is not a, a allowed in any zoning district. That's why we're here tonight for conditional use. When they framed up the new, the new rules, they didn't even put waste transfer in it. Another thing I'd like to say to you, I was there when the gates were locked in 1972, I believe. I had a rubbish route that I did. We woke up in Mesa City and we lost our landfill because Asbury was going to be developed. 
that 25 acres that the citizens in Asbury sit to that have issues of arsenic, methane, and other volatiles, VOCs, in the ground out there are sitting right next to Asbury. There's a reason why that group of men and women, our forefathers and foremothers, worked so hard and diligently to put a landfill out in a secluded area of the county. Everybody agreed to that. The 28 agree uh, uh, agreement was built. Now, we're being asked to move, essentially move our landfill into the city limits, back into the city limits, all 250 tons a day. Um, I'd also like to say that uh, uh, scrap tires, scrap tires. We've discussed this before as a community. Jerry, you know this. We talked about it when the red dust showed up in the north end over everybody's property. You remember that? Well, that was because Holdan was burning meat, products, animals. They were bringing them in. Then we had the big discussion, well, what can they burn? What can we do to cut our costs? Because we're a community that wants to help our industry. Well, we decided on corn and they did tires. That was an existing company. That was an existing company. We worked with them because our men and women were employed out there and our families ate that same bread and drank that same milk. This is a new company coming here that wants to burn tires. You're going to find out overwhelmingly the community does not want to burn tires in a mass burn out there, gasification. You're going to find that out. And you're also going to find out if you, if you hold this off tonight that you're going to get a lot more petitions and a lot more interest and a lot more comments that you need to help you make a decision. Um, I just want to say, they, Mr. Flores said that he doesn't create, doesn't, they don't create, uh, take in toxins. They create toxins. Now you can go back to October 4th and you can hear what he had to say about that. See, here's the deal. The uh, uh, thermal oxidizers is at the stack, the thermal oxidizers. They're not that efficient. Nobody really knows. It depends what brand you buy, like anything else. You know, does Lee's outwear Levi's? Who knows? But the thermal oxidizers have a filter on them, just like dust bags that collect dust at the cement plants have a, have a, have a, have a dust bag, and they change out. Well, you've got to change these filters out. The word that I got from Mr. Flores that evening on October 4th is that that product, full of mercury, furons, and dioxins that didn't go out the stack, have got to go in a metal container, and we'll just find somewhere to put them. Now, he might want to correct himself tonight. I don't know. Uh, efficient buffer. You talked about that. You know, no offense to you guys, but when you had the round robin at the beginning to talk about your issues and ask some questions to staff, and you talked about a buffer. You talked about uh, 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 what did you talk about? The, oh, the street congestion, highway. Con you know, the people here aren't for that. They understand that stuff. They're probably they're probably we can live with a little bit of traffic. What we can't live with is the buffer that we want as citizens from the poison that will come out of that stack. Now, as you know in your report, it says in that report that there is going to be a 36 to 66 foot emission stack. Now, I was going to test you guys tonight to see about the closed loop system, what kind of, what kind of a prialysis or plasma arc or gasification. I don't need to. I can tell by your questions tonight that you've got just as many, many uh, concerns and questions that the rest of us do. So uh, the other thing I want to talk about then is this. Here's what woke me up, and this is why I became how I became. It was an article dated September 23rd this year in the Globe Gazette that uh, Mr. Yavorsky said right in it. Here's, I'm going to quote right out of the article. When I read this, I jumped. We don't emit anything. He said the company is aware of environmental concerns residents might have. We don't emit anything. Everything is done indoors, he said. That's not, that's not correct at all. You, 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 you can't have it. What's that old physics thing? For every action, there's a comparable other right, reaction. And I went to, I, I barely got out of high school. But anyway, it's, it's important to know what he said there. And that's what I, and I waited for a retraction. I went to Brent Trout right over here, and I also talked to John Skipper yesterday about it, didn't I, John? I said, well, I'm waiting for the retraction yet. There's got to be a retraction. The, the, there's a product that comes out of there. Well, you know what that is? <clears throat> That's really a press release in an article that just tells the community, puts that thought in the head of the community. There's a lot of political maneuvering and tricks around. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what we do in America, and we don't have no shots fired or anything. I, I love this country. But that put the thought in the head, the first article that, that the people woke up with, is that there's no emissions, it's not dangerous. There's nothing going to happen there. So that set everybody off. Then as information starts to filter out, 
and comes out more and more, guess what? The people are st starting to stand up. And, and uh, I'm seeing that more than ever. Now I just want to say this. I have been on the landfill board for 12 years. 12 years. No offense to anybody around here, but we got two executive members here, and I'm not going to speak on behalf of the landfill, but I'm going to say a couple things, and if they want to correct me, they can. And these guys know their stuff. Catastrophe, explosions, evacuations plans, backup plan, hazard control, zero emissions, DNR plan, how do we get out, escape plan, item number whatever. We don't have any of that at our little landfill. Let me tell you about that landfill. This is real important now. That landfill that we have is made up of 29 communities and counties and neighbors. We work beautifully. I would say our value is at somewhere between 25 and 35 million dollars since 1972. You want to come into our landfill? You got to buy in. You got to buy in big all the way back in 1972 because that's how good we are. We just don't let anybody just come in. We have standards. And let me tell you about those standards. A cell a landfill cell that we do under the obligation and visual site of the DNR is a million dollars. Million dollars. And you know what? This is how it works. We have very little methane escaping right now. We're in discussions with Align Energy on capturing some methane and doing some alternative stuff. So good things out there. We have a product. They have a product. They have, they have ash, slag, and emissions and other things that have to go to Utah in some cases. If the filters get full of it, if it tests out bad, it's got to go. Iowa does not have a hazmat. We have no monolith in Iowa. We don't dump anything in Iowa. The landfill does not take hazardous waste and put in the landfill. Nobody in Iowa does that I know of. You've got to ship them off. Well, guess what? The landfill of North Iowa produces a byproduct, too. From all those years of the landfill dumping everything in, we have a byproduct, and that's called leachate. Leachate. That's our slag, that's our ash. Now let me tell you about our product. Our product comes down and filters through. It's beautiful. Clay, other stuff, the liners, it's beautiful. We capture that leachate. That leachate gets pumped into a truck. It has some biosolids in it and water. More than gray water, it's your garbage, all of your garbage. We take that stuff and it's tested regularly too. We take our byproduct and we take it to our sanitation out here, Mason City Sanitation. We pay for them to treat it. They treat it. They treat our byproduct that doesn't have to go to Utah, isn't a toxic, it isn't gonna, isn't gonna kill our babies and our granddaughters and grandsons, it's not gonna jeopardize us. I mean, all you gotta do to back that statement up is, is read about mercury, read about furons and dioxins. That's all you gotta do. That's part of this game here. We take it out there, we treat it, and the water aspect of it goes into the Winnebago River. If you had the courage to hold one of these, you could have the courage to drink that water that comes out of our sanitation too. The biosolids that come out of that process, this is our waste, get spread over farmland where we grow our corn, our beans, feed our cattle, our livestock. We've got a beautiful system out there and we have more than 50 years. We have 50 to 75 years. Our backs are not up against the wall. They came a look and we weren't looking. We have a great system and I'm very proud of that landfill out there. In closing, I just would like to say that we do have plenty of time. And let me tell you why. And if you guys want to speak up, if I'm talking out of turn, go ahead, straighten me up. We've got two to six months because the landfill board's not going to make a decision any sooner than that, two to six months. You know why? Because they're going to do their due diligence. They're going to do what they've been doing quietly for you, taking your garbage since 1972, without putting anything in the air, without worrying about a hazmat plan, without worrying about the DNR writing them up, without an escape route, none of that. You got it good here, folks, and now you're about to go into a whole thing of, of dump five truckloads there, one half of a truckload goes into the atmosphere now. Ours doesn't. It's clean, it's secluded. So two to six months with the landfill to look at this issue, because they're gonna do their due diligence, because that's why they that's who they are. These guys were on it before I was on it. I've been on it 12 years. 
excellent work. You should be giving them a medal. The story should be written up about our landfill and the education that it provides out there for everybody and what we do right in this community. And I gotta tell you one more thing. Boys, help me out. 12 years on that landfill and I have never raised my voice. Never once. Not one time. A go along to get along guy. That's what I was up there. No, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Because these guys read from these 29 years, what a bad dude I am. They ain't seen that because they got a great system. They command respect and I give it to them. I don't want to mess with that. And I don't think your community does. I hope that with that two to six months window, they're going to do their due diligence. I'll support this crowd tonight and the community and you guys postponing this. Get your community. Nobody knew about a community meeting. I appreciate Mr. Stanbaugh and Jacqueline Arthur setting that up with Mr. Flores and Yavorsky. We didn't know that. It was November 16th. Let's have a community meeting before you make a decision. Don't you want to hear from your constituents? And by the way, I want to say this to you before I leave. I know how hard this job is. I've been to maybe two to three dozen of these meetings as EBAs. This is by far the toughest issue you guys, this group, has ever faced, and previous groups, I can tell you that too. It's very difficult, but it's one of those things, because you're quasi-judicial, that you need to listen to everybody's point of view very carefully. Those that want to just keep moving forward, and those that want to optimistically be concerned about what's happening. You need to listen to everybody. If there's going to be a public meeting, we need to wait for that public meeting. We need to see what's going to be said there. We need to wait for the Landfill Board of Iowa, who's the biggest player in this whole program. It's not ZBA. It's the landfill of North Iowa. If they vote it up, it goes. If they vote it down, it dies. You certainly want to hear them and their due diligence and what they're going to do. They're going to do some hard work in the future. Actually takes you off the hook. So I hope you respect what everybody says here, and I agree with Heidi. She just happens to, we just happen to disagree on the issue, but I agree with her. We want what's best for the community. We want to be optimistic. We want to be positive. Some of these things aren't so positive. Remember this as I leave you. These guys have been knocking around, do your research, for 06. They haven't landed anywhere and talked to the biggest utility companies in the Midwest anyway, and haven't been able to pull it off. We don't need to do untried and experimental here for our citizens of Mason City or our children. Thank you. My name is George Anderson. I'm Mayor of North Springs. And I've got a um, couple concerns I'd like to voice. Uh, at the landfill meeting, we were told that there was no 5 megaton or 10 megaton system in the United States. And then we found out at the Mason City Council meeting that there was one in Alexandria. Kind of a conflict there. Why don't we have information from the communities, whether it's a 10 or a 100 megaton unit, on how those communities like the businesses in their town? We don't have any of that. I would have, if I was in that company, I'd have been the first thing I'd have put forth. Here's what uh, the one in Minnesota says. Here's what the one in California says about a system similar to this. We have none of that. I don't understand that. Uh, and then didn't Javorski, did Mr. Javorski uh, say tonight there are no toxics produced in the? In the gas fire. In the system at all? No, in the gas fire. Just in the gas fire. Right. Okay. The toxins that you would consider are the same, similar to the natural gas that comes out of the okay. turbine. Because they were talking about at the city or a city council meeting of shipping out toxic waste to Utah, possibly to get rid of. You do. Then that can't probably be done, but uh, that like was I say, how many expressed people are gonna... as one of those catastrophic things. If you can't dispose of them at the landfill, you can't use anything that the Iowa DNR would approve, right. where would you go with these items? But Utah is those one of developed? those items. We don't anticipate we're going to need that. But if you do, where are we going to be? And then, uh, can you pull up those 23? Things. Number seven, what did it say? <clears throat> I can tell you, I can read number yeah. seven. It That's says, true. a plan for ash disposal that addresses containment, storage, transfer, yes. and final listen up, disposal. Listen up. Uh, do other facilities like in uh, Alexandria produce ash? If uh, uh, my, the, the one in Alexandria is an incinerator, 
It's a mass burn, totally different than okay. what they do. Are it there 100 megaton units in the country that produce ash? There are megawatt units, yep. not megaton. That's okay, a bomb. megawatts. But do they produce ash? They all produce ash. Anything that converts from Can we from get reports on what they what their ash contains, it'd be the same as what we're going to end up with. It, it will not that be the same. That should all be history that you it should It will not be the with. same. Similar. It, it will if they're burning us. garbage. Mr. Anderson, if I could. Um, I'm done. The, the, the type of forum that we do. have tonight is questions or comments being addressed to the board. Okay. And if there are things in which the, the applicant would I like would, to do. I would think we would have a report on what other units produce, if they produce ash at all. And what was in theirs I mean, not about be exactly the same, but it's got to be similar. And there's no report on any of that. That's what makes me think it's kind of <coughs> smoky. Sir. Thank you. Yeah.